So you've been very successful in your MMA uh, fights so far. But I have to wonder, um, you're not as young as, as, as you once yeah, absolutely, were. Absolutely. And uh, what, what is in the future for a guy of, you're in your early 30s? Yeah, yeah, mid 30s. Um, yeah, mid 30s. Yeah, so what's a guy your age do? Do you transition to coaching or, or can you keep fighting in t to the age of uh, Randy Couture? Yeah, yeah. You know, to me, it's like um, I enjoy doing it. And, and I've got a, you know, I'm, I'm more focused on, on training my students than, than, than myself. Um, but in training my students, I have to train, you know, cause I have, a, I have some, you know, I have a lot of really good students that, that, that need me to actually roll with them from time to time or spar with them. So, you know, the way I look at fighting is I'm, I'm doing the training anyway. So if fights pop up, you know, absolutely I'll take them. So um, I enjoy it, you know, I love it, it's fun. Uh, like to fight and, and, and the thing is with with a fight you learn so much, you know uh, Winning or losing in a fight you learn a lot more, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, um, What does the saying go? Um, I forgot how it goes, but so, something to the effect of, of, of um, Actual actual application is is worth a lot more than theory. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to be one of those um, coaches and there's so many of them out there, you know, not to knock anybody, but there's a lot of coaches out there that have guys uh, fighting, you know, fighting MMA and, you know, and they rush them out there before they're ready or they, you know, they're, they're, they're telling them to go out here and, and, and take this fight, fight this guy, fight that guy, but they haven't done it themselves, you know, and once you've done it yourself, you have a different perspective on what your fighter's feeling, what they're thinking, you know, how, how to approach it. And you're going to be a lot less prone to just push and push and tell them to do this, that, and the other when you've experienced it yourself. So for me, the more I fight, the more uh, actual application I get, the better it is for, for my students. So I'll continue to fight for, you know, to, to me, it's, it's all about, you know, age re really isn't relevant to me. It's about how much wear and tear you have on your body and, 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 and your mental state, you know. So I'm always training. I'm, you know, I'm always working out, so um, yeah, I'll fight, fight forever. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah, but it's funny to hear you say that uh, the fighting is so much fun because getting in a cage and fighting somebody is probably one of the top most scariest things <laughs> for for most people on earth. You yeah. know, so for you to enjoy it, uh, that's amazing. But yeah. what you, you said that you learn a lot from it. Can you give us an example or two of something that you've learned from from fighting? Absolutely. I mean, w one of the one of the main things is that, like, you know, fighting, fighting to me is like, um, you know, it 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 kind of heightens like your 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 senses. Like, if I'm not fighting, my life is kind of it's kind of easy. You know, it's like you kind of you know you're doing this. I go and I train and I wake up. I get on the computer. I you know do some work. Um, but there's no like there's no there's no pressure. There's nothing pushing me to, uh, okay, I have to go, you know, be at my best. I have to go get this workout in. I've got to go, you know, do this, that, and the other. Like, there's, there's nothing to really put any, any life, really, in, in, into my life. So for me, and, and, and I think a lot of people will kind of avoid that because it's, it's you know, fighting is it's stressful, um, you know, and it's, it's not you know it, it's it's scary like if you go into a, a fight and you, somebody's gonna try to knock your head off not uh, aside from that then you've got the pressure you know you've got you know friends and family and everybody's watching like but people people kind of run from that and i think people generally do that in life uh with situations in life that 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 put pressure on their life people avoid that you know so one of the main things i learned from fighting is that you've got a you got a you got to attack that, you know? It's the same thing with jujitsu too. Like I see people all the time, you look at m most students, you know, in, in a jujitsu school and you ask them why they don't compete. And, you know, and they'll give you all types of different answers, but the reality of it is they're scared or they're nervous or, you know, they're uncertain. You, you'll never progress in life if you run away from uncertain situations, if you, if you run away from things that put pressure or put fear into you, you, you will not be successful with that mentality. So that's the number one thing that, that, that I've learned from fighting. And the number one, two things is just, is just preparation. And to me, that's again, another life lesson. It's like the best thing that you can do in your life 
at any moment is to prepare, is mm -hmm. to prepare for what you want to prepare for an expected outcome in the future. You know, so whether you're running a business or you're fighting or whatever you're doing, the number one thing that you can do to 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 facilitate the result you want is 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 prepare, prepare. You know, and you and and preparation doesn't mean that you know exactly how it's going to end, but you can predict the outcome with some some level of certainty if you know that you've prepared properly. So. Right. Oh, very wise words. And just to drop a little nugget uh, of wisdom with you guys, you mentioned pressure and how good it is for you, but pressure makes diamonds. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so where are you teaching uh, or training now? So now, um, you know, my team's called Gracie Fighter Dojo. Um, we're actually uh, in Laguna Hills. I'm uh, partnered up with Rampage over at his gym. But they're actually going to be moving, I think, further south. Uh, moving locations, so I, I may or may not be there. I may possibly open up a, open up another gym in, in the Costa Mesa area or Newport area, or uh, you know, may partner up with a couple places. Just kind of weighing my options now, but okay. I'm going to be here in Orange County All right. somewhere. <laughs> cool. Before yeah. we move on to the technique portion, I'm just going to ask you a, a couple quick questions. You can reply as, as with as as short or long answers as you want. I'm just going to fire some questions off at you. Cool. Um, your favorite uh, favorite submission. My favorite submission would probably be it would probably be a Kimura, 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 Kimura heel hook would probably be my favorite submission okay. because you know those are probably two of the moves that you can you can catch from just about anywhere. Mm -hmm. Probably Kimura, you know, top, bottom, back, turtle, wherever you're at. You can catch it. So. Gee or no gee. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, least favorite submission? Least favorite submission. Mm, my least favorite would probably be like a, maybe a north-south choke mm -hmm. for the opposite reason. There's not right. <laughs> there's only one place you catch it from. Right. So okay. probably my least favorite. All right. Yeah. Uh, most admired jiu-jitsu person? My most admired jiu-jitsu person. Hmm. There's a few. Um, I would probably say uh, one of my favorite guys um, personally is uh, Ruben Asato. Hmm. Um, the best guy that I've ever trained with is hands down David Terrell. Hmm. Um, but Nick, Nick Diaz is probably one of the, the most admired just because I like, you know, I know his, his story, you know, like Nick did not come from, you know, like a, a beautiful place. And he, he, it took a lot for him to get where he's at. Mm -hmm. um, and his jiu-jitsu is, is amazing. So um, he would probably be the most admired because there's a, you know, jiu-jitsu is not like a, uh, it's not a poor man's sport. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go like, you know, you look at, you look at boxing gyms and you look at jiu-jitsu gyms and you find them in completely opposite uh, areas you know so you're not going to go to the hood and see you know gracie baja right. so um i think a lot of people doing jujitsu are are more privileged than most people mm -hmm. but still they don't take advantage of it you know what i mean like right. you know i got you hear students that you know complain about uh oh you know i, I gotta drive you know 45 minutes to get to the gym or you know just things that are like not really a big deal. And so for Nick to kind of go through that, you know, his whole process to, to get to where he's at, I'd probably say he would, he would be the most admired. Good answer. Yeah. Least liked person in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> oh, least liked person in jiu-jitsu. There's the pressure. You like oh, pressure. Wow. Oh, who do I not like in jiu-jitsu, man? I don't have a particular person, you know? I mean, I, I can't really think of a person that I, I really don't like in, in general, even <laughs> outside of jiu-jitsu. Um, you know, I mean, I've had people that I've, you know, maybe disliked for a time, but, you know, I'm not the type of person I'm like to hold a grudge, you know? Right. I think, you know, okay. most okay. stuff is pretty petty. But, but I will say this, that what I really don't like, you know, I was just at a tournament this weekend, uh, Long Beach, I think it was like SJJ 
something, some jujitsu organization. And, the, and, and, and the tournament was great. I watched a kid compete against another kid and the ref, it was the ref or the, ju or the, the guy keeping the score. Somebody messed up, basically messed up on the points. And after the match, the kid's uh, coach or his dad, is, they're complaining to the ref. And they're like showing him a video. They're like, look at this, you know, look. And the ref looks at it and the ref's like, you're right. So he calls the kids back to the mat, talks to the score, and they, they run the match back in like sudden death over time, right? And I was like, all right, that's, that's, that's how it should be. That's how it should be. So what, what I really dislike now, and, and, and not to really like single out um, IBJJF, but I, I don't really compete in those tournaments. And um, one of the things I don't really like is just, and this is not everybody there because I've had some good experiences with people there, but just like the overall attitude with a lot of the people um, you know, at these tournaments and, and, and some other tournaments too, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like this, this arrogance and this, you know, this idea that like these people should be, you know, grateful to be able to give us their money and, and compete here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I think that the jiu-jitsu world and I think that the, uh, you know, the, the tournament organizers particularly, they need to get back to understanding that these people are, are your customers and that you need to service your customers. It's not the other way around. These guys are paying $100 to come and compete at your tournament. The very least that you could do is, you know, speak to people respectfully, um, you know, uh, you know, just, just treat people like, you know, don't treat people like they're beneath you. And I've seen that on so many occasions with just random people, you know, talking to staff or referees or whatever, you know, just, you know, basic, you know, uh, you know, human concerns about, you know, how the tournament is running and what are they supposed to do and where are they supposed to be and easy, these people treating them like they're inmates and they're, the, you know, the correctional officers, mm. you know. So that's one of the things that I really hate uh, about jiu-jitsu and, it, you know, and I think it's, it's really up to the people to, to change it because as long as you accept it and you just keep giving these people your money while they treat you this way, I think that it's always going to be that way. So, you know, hopefully there's, there's some, there's some, you know, other organizations that, you know, that come along and they get it right and they're able to, just, they're, they're able to, to create some level of competition because that's the only way it's going to change, you know. Okay. Um, that hasn't been my experience, but uh, for sure, when you got these giant tournaments with thousands of people going through, it's, any business would be a challenge dealing with that. A absolutely. And, and it's not to single them out because that's, that's, you know, that's, you know, that hasn't always been my experience. But, and, and it hasn't just been them. It's been the same at some other, you know, some other big tournaments too. I just don't, you know, know the name of them. But I think that it's, it's, it's about serving the, 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 the customers. The customer. And they have, to, they have to recognize that. You know, all of these tournaments do, you know. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to drop you uh, two more questions on you before absolutely. we move on. Um, the best thing about America. The best thing about America, <laughs> man, there's a lot. Um, you know, I think obviously the, the freedoms that we have here. I think we have a, uh, a great level of, of freedom here, excuse me. Um, and I think that your ability to, to, um, to pursue any business, any career, I think the opportunities here are just amazing. So I think just the opportunity, the freedom, and uh, the freedom of opportunity specifically, I think, is, is the best thing about America. There's nothing um, other than your mind to limit you uh, to, to doing anything that you want here. You know, it doesn't matter where, you know, uh, you know, where you come from, you know, where your parents, you know, how much money your parents made or anything like that. I think you have the, the ability to succeed and to choose, not just succeed, but to choose, you know, any career path, you know, like, like you've chosen, like I've chosen to uh, pursue any career path, you want to be successful with it. So I, I don't think that, that you have those, uh, I don't think those options are as readily available in too many other places. Right. Okay. And the last one, what's the worst thing about this country in your opinion? Um, the worst thing, I think the worst thing um, about this country here is I think that people uh, have a tendency to be um, 
ungrateful, you know, uh, particularly right. like here in Orange County, I think we're so blessed, like, you know, we live next to, you know, some of the most beautiful beaches in the world, um, which it's a very uh, wealthy place. I think everything that you could, you know, wish for um, is here. Uh, but one of the things that, that, that uh, my pastor, uh, Kitten B. Shore at Mariner's Church always says is, the one thing though that people in Orange County don't have <laughs> is enough <laughs> because everyone wants more. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's probably the worst thing. I think people are, are, can, can be uh, more selfish than they ought to be and not as giving as they should be. You know, and you know, myself included at, at, at times, but I think that if you, you keep that in mind and you, 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 uh, you, you try to, to alter that and, and give back to people, I think that, that you can change it, so. Very wise words. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Great having you on the show, Jason. Yeah. Now let's move on to the technique part. Awesome. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back here with Jason Manley, black belt uh, in jiu-jitsu and amazing MMA practitioner as well. Jason, um, let's talk a little bit about half guard. There are some people nowadays that don't like the half guard. They think your guard is halfway past, so why would you ever choose to go there? Uh, what is your opinion of half guard? I'm not really a fan of half guard either. I'll play more like a Z guard um, in that position um, because I, I can attack from there. Um, I don't feel like I have as many attacks if I'm playing like a half or like a deep half guard. Uh, I'm more of a guy that wants to attack more than sweep. Um, and Z guard, particularly for MMA too, I can attack and I can also get up from there. You can maintain so, the distance. Exactly. I can defend punches. I can attack the legs. I can attack up high and I can stand up to my feet. So um, to me, that's, that's, that's... Just so people, maybe beginners know what we're talking about, let's just show quickly what Z guard is. So. Guard is here, and I hook my leg in here, and I take my shin and I pop it here across. Yeah. I don't want it uh, too shallow. Mm -hmm. I want in it in a jiu-jitsu tournament, if I get this knee across and smash you here, now I'm going to get an advantage from this position. Yeah, I don't want to be there. <laughs> so I keep this in here, and I'll work from here. I'll work off an overhook. None of these positions here. Okay. So I don't generally stay and hang out or play a deep half from, from this position, and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to be here now. Right. Today, let's talk about something we were talking about earlier. Inverted half guard is what they refer to that position. I know you have an uh, injured hand, so we'll go yeah. on this side. Perfect. But some guys, when they're trying to pass, they'll turn your, their back to you, and they'll go this way. This is what's called uh, inverted half guard. What do you like to do in that position? Absolutely. So when I'm here, anytime somebody wants to play that game on me, when they go to drop and turn their hip, I'm going to drop my elbow inside. I want my elbow underneath his hip. And from there, I use this leg and I kind of kick the calf out. And Let's I just back hook. up one second, Jason. Yes. What's the point of putting your elbow beneath my hip? My elbow under the hip is so that you don't get your weight all the way on me. You're going to be heavy here once you get here, and it's going to be hard for me to do anything here. So I want to be able to, to keep your, your weight and keep your hips off of me. Mm -hmm. right. I, I, if I miss this opportunity, I can still get here, but it's kind of risky because I'm going to have to hip out a little bit and it's going to make this hook loose. Mm -hmm. right? So I want to try to catch this before. Again, if not, I can get there, but it's, it's much better if I'm here. So when I'm, when I'm playing in this game, I'm always thinking about my hip and blocking my hip. Mm -hmm. right? So I, uh, once I get this frame here underneath your hip, uh, it's hard for you to get that, that, that weight and that leverage on me. Right, and just so for you, you beginners, you know, my goal from here is to just extract my foot if I can. Of course, Jason's going to be keeping his, his legs tight, but, but that's the fight. You know, I'm trying to push his legs away and, and extract this leg or even bring this knee up and, and somehow get past his guard here. But Jason's not going to let me do that. I'm not going to let it happen today. So once I get here under the hip, I'm going to kick this out and I'm going to put my foot here under the knee. From there, it's real easy. I'm gonna take this foot and I'm gonna lift it straight up. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my right elbow and lift his hip. As I do that, I'm gonna take my right leg and I'm gonna straighten it out. And I'm gonna slide to his back. From there, I lock up here, come to the shoulder. And I'm gonna slide and attack the neck. Finish the rear naked choke. Are you concerned about getting both hooks or do you prefer only having one hook? I actually prefer to have one hook. Why is that? Um, for, for a couple of reasons. To me, this isn't very strong. I don't feel like I can control you here. So unless I have a body triangle here, I want this. Because from here, what are you gonna do from here? Exactly, you're gonna turn into me. Mm -hmm. 
if I come here with this one hook, now turn into me. Okay. I'm gonna hook here. You're not. I'm not gonna let you turn into me. All right. So if I don't have my body triangle here, I'm gonna keep the, keep this one hook here, and I'm gonna block you from turning into me with this. Okay. Right. Even if I don't have this locked, right, and I'm just here. When you start to turn into me, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna put you back. Yep. Right. So I want my seatbelt grip. And I want this. On my body triangle here. Hmm. Let's go back. So we're here, maybe this knee shield is bugging me, so I'm gonna push it out of the way and turn my back to you. Absolutely. I'm gonna block that hip, and I'm gonna come underneath here, my foot under the knee. I'm gonna lift straight in the air with my foot. I'm gonna lift my right elbow and lift your hip. Straighten my right leg, slide right underneath. Immediately come to my seatbelt grip. I'm gonna lock here, our body triangle here. I'm generally gonna stay here because I may or may not want to finish this rear naked choke. If I get it, I'm gonna finish it. But if you're defending, then I have all the options from here. I can come up and do calf slicers. Uh, all the 10th Planet guys can do twisters and all the wonderful stuff they like to do from this position. I'm gonna stay here, attack my rear naked choke. This is where I wanna finish. But again, if I don't finish, I have options. Okay. Nice. I know you're a little injured today, so I won't ask you to do it uh, you know, two full speed, but let's oh, just do it a little bit more motion. Stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fine with this move. All right. All right. So now we were talking earlier about what happens when I defend the rear naked choke. Ah, uh, yes. So when I come in here and I start to go here, he grabs his arm. I'm going to do the... Uh, we call this is this is the Rachel Cummins choke. This is her her signature technique. You go here and he pulls my arm. All right, I'm gonna kind of lean forward with my head, and my right hand is gonna grab my neck. From there, I'm gonna pull back with my neck and squeeze. All right, so kind of solves the problem when a guy gets here. You don't want to let him put this across and come out. So I get here and he gets this. I don't want to let him get this, but if he does, I still have options. Come in, grab the neck. So just to clarify, you're not baiting, you're not giving me that arm. Absolutely not. I'd rather you not have this. I'd rather, I'd rather get here. This is, this, is, this is strong. But a lot of times um, you'll see guys get this. And, and usually, this is usually because they're, they're doing it wrong. This is usually because they're choking here and they're putting the hand on top of the head, right, rather than coming behind the head, right? But if they get it, then, and... Very nice moves, Jason. Absolutely. Thank you know, uh, you see a lot of guys do rear naked chokes like this, and I, it always blew my mind. Like, why do people do this? And you even see illustrations of guys Absolutely. cupping the back of the head, and yeah. that's not how Marcelo Garcia does it. And that, none of the top guys, they always get this handle low and like chop it with it. But I've heard recently one of the reasons is that in MMA, the gloves get in the way, so maybe that's why they're cupping the back of the head. What's your opinion on that? Uh, you know, to me, I, I can still, you know, even. In MMA, I can still get my hand behind there generally nine times out of ten. Um, maybe that's because they're not training uh, with the gloves enough. You know, a lot of guys are training, but maybe they don't train with the gloves enough, and maybe they have difficulty. I'd rather even just go like a short choke, though, with the gloves on than, than put my hand here because he's going to grab that arm. 99% yeah. <laughs> of the time, unless he has no idea what he's doing, if your hand's on the top of the head, he's pulling it down. So yeah. I'd, I'd rather do a, a short choke or or get my head behind the head for sure. It's a rookie mistake, guys. Don't rear naked choke like this. Rookie <laughs> mistake. Get that arm hit. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show thank today. Thank you for having me. If people Appreciate want to find it. out more about you, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Jason Manley. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Jason Manley, J-S-O-N-M-A-N-L-Y. Uh, hit me up anytime. I'm always uh, happy to, to chat. So. Well, enjoyed all our conversations and uh, you're a class act. I always had fun training with you as well. So thanks thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for making it to the end of another episode of This Week in BJJ. Hope you enjoyed it. We enjoy bringing these to you, but please let us know. Leave a comment on YouTube if you're watching it there, or if you're watching on iTunes, leave us a review there. We do appreciate those, and we read every one of them. So thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time on This Week in BJJ.